Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the privilege of studying your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. You reveal yourself through your word. You build faith in us through your word. We just thank you. We praise you for this opportunity. And we ask that you'd help us to make the most of it. We invite the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. We pray these things and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're looking at the blessed life. Quick review. Our first study was study the Word of God. Then it was seek the wisdom of God. Then submit to the will of God. After that, stay in the worship of God. And then, in our last study, state your wrongs to God. All of these things we're looking at from an application standpoint because they are linked to that word blessed, the blessed life. We've looked at each one of those and we've studied numerous verses that have that word in it. And so we're going to continue our study and the title of this study is Shine in the World for God. Now, unlike some of the other passages that we've looked at, some of the other studies that have multiple verses that have that word blessed and that are linked to that main idea, that main topic, this verse is a little bit different. It's a standalone verse, and it doesn't specifically speak of our topic, shine in the world for God. So we're going to have to we're going to have to do a little digging to to find application for this for ourselves. So let's just jump in. My prayer is is that by the end of the study we will see clearly why it is blessed to shine in the world for God. Our text is found in Psalm 33 Psalm 33, verse 12. The verse says this, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Blessed, there's our word, blessed, happy. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. It's a blessed state, a happy state, to be that people whom God has chosen, to be his own heritage. Now, as we look at this verse, we contemplate the blessedness of being that nation, that people. I want us to consider three things. First, we're going to look at Israel. Second, we're going to look at Jesus. And third, we're going to look at the church to the Christian individual. Shine in the world for God. We know that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. And from the beginning of the Bible, we see in the very beginning of Genesis, let there be light. Light appears and God reveals himself. And as, as we progress in the scriptures, God chooses an individual, Abraham. And from Abraham, there's Isaac, from Isaac, there's Jacob. And from Jacob, there are the 12 sons, the 12 tribes of Israel. God has chosen the nation of Israel. They're his people. I want to read a passage of scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 7. And I want to read specifically verse 6. It says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. 
For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Blessed, blessed is that nation whom God chooseth to be his heritage. The Lord truly has blessed Israel and Promise to Abraham, I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you, and through you shall all the nations of the world be blessed. Israel is a, is, was chosen by the Lord to be a holy people, a special people above all nations. And God strategically placed them in this land, this corridor, this travel route between all of these other nations that would make their way through that territory, that land, and be forced to encounter God. For his temple would be established there, his word and law would be taught there, and his people would live there. And God's desire was through those people to influence the world. To influence the world. I want to look at one other passage of Scripture. It's found in Isaiah. Isaiah 49. In Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6, we read this. It would help if I made it to Isaiah instead of Jeremiah. <laughs> Isaiah 49, verse 6 says this. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mightest or mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. He goes on and he talks about uh, the, the Redeemer of Israel, the Holy One, and this ultimately finds its fulfillment in Christ. But Israel was to be a light unto the Gentiles. The Lord placed that nation there to, to be a light, to reveal, to illuminate the eyes of the passerbys, those around, to see the Lord. But through idolatry and immorality, and ultimately the rejection of Christ, they failed in their calling to, to accomplish that light. Jesus fulfills that light. And so we move from Israel, and I want us to look at some, some passages of Scripture. While we're in Isaiah, we can turn back to, to um, Isaiah chapter 9, and I want to look at verses 1 and 2. It says, Nevertheless, uh, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephthali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. The people, which, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them the light shineth. Now, we see that verse being used in Matthew chapter 4 with Jesus being the fulfillment of that. I want to turn to Luke chapter 2, and in Luke's Gospel chapter 2, we find this same idea where, Simi where, where Jesus is there in the temple, and Simeon is responding to this child, and he says this, a light to lighten the Gentiles, in verse 32, and the glory of the people of Israel, speaking at of Jesus, the child, being a light unto the Gentiles. He comes and ultimately fulfills the purpose of Israel, was to, to be a light, to reveal God to the nations, to the people. He comes as a light, Simeon declares. And in John's Gospel, John chapter 1, John speaks of the same thing. We'll look at several verses here in the Gospel of John, and then we'll move on to the church, to the Christian in John chapter 1, verse 4, we find this. In him was life, speaking of the word, which is Jesus. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. We'll come back to that. But turn with me to chapter 3, verse 19. Chapter 3, verse 19, we read this. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Turn with me to John chapter 8, verse 12. John 8, verse 12 says this. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. One more verse. Chapter 9, verse 5. <clears throat> Chapter 9, verse 5 says this. As long as I am in the world, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. We live in a dark world, but light has come. Christ is the light. God is light. Now there are men who love darkness, and there are men who are in darkness. Jesus says, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. He says, but as many as received him, we read that verse, to them he gave power or the right to become sons of God. Jesus has ascended to the right hand of the Father, but he hasn't removed his light from the world. Turn with me to Matthew's Gospel. Matthew chapter 5. And instead of us reading that verse first, hold your place there in Matthew 5 when you find it. And I want to read a passage of Scripture to you in 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Now we read that Israel is this nation chosen of the Lord and the blessedness of being that chosen nation. Well, Here's how all this ties in and applies to us as we consider shine in the world for God. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But ye, speaking to the church, to the believer, to the Christian, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. In Christ we're called an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him, who hath called you, notice this, out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. He goes on to say, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from flesh and lust which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, there are the Gentiles, again, we, we referenced, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God, glorify God in the day of visitation. So we, as believers, we don't place, replace Israel, as some believe, but we too are called now, by the Lord, in the Lord, to be a light, to be a light, to be a, a nation chosen of the Lord to represent Him here on earth, to reveal him to others. Now let's look at one last passage of Scripture, Matthew chapter 5. Ye are the light of the world, Jesus says. He said, I am the light of the world, and now he's saying, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. He's called us to be light. He strategically placed us just like he did Israel. You are where you are, in the family that you are, in the city that you are, in the place of business, in the place of interaction that you are because he wants you to be a light. He wants you to shine in the midst of darkness, to reveal himself to those who are bound by darkness so that they can be translated from the kingdom of darkness into his kingdom of light. And it is a blessed thing, we've already read, for a nation to be chosen of the Lord, to be his heritage. And the scripture tells us that we are his heritage. We are a holy nation. 
We are to represent the Lord, and there is a blessedness in doing so. So I encourage you, I am encouraged, the scripture instructs us as believers, as the church, if we want to experience the blessed life, we must shine in our world for God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for your word, and we ask that you'd help us to be obedient to what we find in the scripture. We pray your blessing and peace in Jerusalem, your people. We know that you will reveal yourself to them. We thank you for this time that you are working in and through your church. We ask that you would help us to experience the fullness of the blessed life by shining in our world for you, to be a light for you. We ask that you would illuminate us and let your light shine in and through us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.